Good morning and welcome to Duality. I'm your host, Akasha. And today we are talking about our conscious and the voices in our head and the committee and our ego and whatever you want to call it. Mainly we're going to focus on how we have this um, kind of the negative voice. You know, just to kind of like bring that awareness to the fact that we all have it. It exists within each of us. And in that, how do we, you know, kind of integrate and move forward with that? Like, how can we amplify our kinder voice to not steer away uh, the negative one, but kind of make it comfortable where it feels like it doesn't have to be yelling, right? So with that, you know, we can all relate to saying we have these times and these moments and good morning, Lori. And we have these times and these moments where it's like, you know, you think you're doing you're doing something and it could be something that you feel really confident in. And then in a moment you're like, wait a second. I'm not feeling so like confident. Like, oh, okay, you know what? I don't feel like I did enough. You know, did I study enough for this? It's like you've only studied five years. It's no no big deal. But no, I don't think I studied enough. Oh, okay, you know, or am I on here? Am I doing too much? Did I did I do too much this morning? You know, am I am I taking up too much space or am I not taking up enough space? Like, what is it that's going on um, within my own mind? And I feel like, in my opinion, my experience and and my observation and reflection on myself and others has been when we get into this space in this like kind of insecure space that will kick up it's like we're thinking about how we're going to be perceived from other people you know and more concerned on that than we are with how we actually feel about ourselves you know if we know ourselves in the way that like okay we are more than capable of doing something and have the capacity to and has been studying and putting the work into it you know your intention you know you're integral with what it is you're doing why is there so much self-doubt you know and then you can trace that everyone has different origins of where it comes from but you could trace that back usually to some kind of childhood event or um, even if you can't trace it back to an exact memory, you can trace it back to a feeling or even sense that you may have felt like that your whole life as far back as you can remember that you might have not felt like you were enough or felt like you were too much. You know, like personally, that's one of my insecurities that comes up where I will be in a space and be like, oh no, I think I'm doing too much. Like I you know, I'm wearing, I'm wearing one eye contact and I'm just in a deli right now. And I just feel like I'm just like looking and there's so much attention on me. There's just too much, you know, I don't know. I feel insecure about this. Like I shouldn't doubt of that because for me, when I, when I, I'll do things that are kind of, um, I guess could be labeled as like eccentric or, uh, you know, different or kind of out there my whole life. I've just always had that kind of way as a creative and just kind of, uh, beating my own drum and doing my own thing. But then I would get really weirded out when I would get a lot of attention from it. Um, From big groups, it would be overwhelming to get that much attention. And I'll be like, oh, wait. I would get like shy and be like pulled back. And not because I've always been doing these things for myself. And I wouldn't think further ahead like, oh, okay, well, if I wear blue lipstick today, this is going to attract people. And then once it does, I'm like, all right, let me just... But I don't have to either because it's not doing too much if it's something that I want to do. It's not doing too much if it's something that feels good for me or feels good for you, you know. And it's important to keep that in mind. Like, you know, when you're wearing something or you're doing something, if you feel good about it, you're not doing too much. No matter what anyone says, no matter what the setting is, like, you know, you check in with yourself. You check in why you like it. Like, why do I like what I'm wearing? 
oh, because it makes me feel good. Well, why does it make me feel good? Because it's an outfit that I picked out and I wanted to wear for this particular event and it suits it, it makes me feel happy and excited. You know, it's to know why we do the things we do. And um, when we, it, usually when we get more insecure about the things that are kind of different and stuff, um, you know, it's good. It's a good tool at times when we subconsciously don't realize that we're doing things for other people. You know, say that I am going to wear something that might be super extra because of the origin is that I actually want that attention and I want to be looked at and stuff like that. You know, maybe if that was something of mine, then I can retrace that and be like, you know, I don't need any of that. And I can myself sit with the fact that that might be coming from a wounded area you know, where I am now warranting or demanding the attention, like, like a, like a baby throwing a tantrum, you know, like, look at me, pay attention to me, you know, if uh, we can discern whether it's coming from an origin like that, or if it's coming from a space of, you know, I just really like this. And it's not, it doesn't have to do with anybody else. I feel like that's when I feel the most confident is when I retrace and kind of take a step back and go back into why it is that I am doing what I'm doing. And when it comes back to me, and it's like, I'm not doing this for anyone else, I'm doing this for me, to be my best self, to be me, and to embody that, which innately is doing it for other people, but in a good way. Because if I'm, if I have the courage to come up here and be myself, you might have the, you know, you might be inspired to be yourself somewhere in a space. And, but that's an indirect inspiration. And although that can be in my underlying tension and purpose in life, it's not the origin in which I'm doing something for. Like I'm not wearing something specifically to appease you. It, I'm doing it because it's me. And that's just an example. You know, that's just an example of many different ways that we go about, you know, talking to ourselves or noticing things or seeing things. And like, you know, maybe that example and, um, could kind of spark that knowing, you know, and that start that conversation with yourself. We are told not to have conversations with ourselves and that having conversations with ourselves is, you know, uh, not right, like, or it makes us crazy that, oh, you can't talk to yourself. That's weird. Why are you doing that? And it's like, you should talk to yourself all the time. You should talk to yourself all the time. Like having that internal dialogue with yourself that communication is so important to be able to take accountability for things, to reflect on things, to grow from things. How can we move forward in our lives if we don't have a talk with ourselves? You know, like a business meeting, call forth all parts of you. It's like, all right, team, this is what we're doing. What's going on? Why are we affected by this? Why aren't we affected by that? What do, how, what do we want to improve? What do we want to let go? Just like anything else, if you have a team, you have a, a work environment, a business, a partner, how do you expect to expand and grow and learn if you're not checking in, you know, and like knowing where not only you're at, where the other person's at, or where the other versions of yourself because we all have these different versions even if you want to use more of the archetypes like we all have our inner child we have our inner wise you know elder we have our uh, all different all different things you know we have all of these different types and versions of ourself from our story you know we are the main character in our story we aren't the supporting cast like we are it this is this is our life this is our story and in that you wanna you know you don't just jump to a story you have no idea what's going on nobody's say, explaining anything like there's always explanations even in movies where nobody's talking there's explanations through actions and views and and different things like there's always going to be the space for that you know so having that communication with yourself when you're telling yourself your own story in your head are you being kind or are you being mean and why is it that you're being either of these things you know if you're being mean to yourself i strongly recommend 
to remind yourself of your strengths. You know, sometimes we can get into just in general, we can just be aware of our negative traits, like whether we are doing shadow work or whether we're just like living and just have been more exposed to knowing our negative traits, whether that be from our hyper awareness of self and or others around us kind of projecting and and or telling maybe some of them are real maybe some of them aren't but when people are constantly telling us you know you're this way you're that way especially as a child when your mind is like so sensitive and and little and like growing it's like what do you think you're gonna say to yourself anything that you constant anything that's constantly repeated in your life in your brain in your mind is going to have an effect on you repetition right or insanity even you know it's like doing the same thing expecting different results if we're constantly having bad self-talk we're driving ourselves insane because we're learning to believe these things we're learning to to really like with our whole chest be like wow i'm a horrible person if that's what you're telling yourself every single day you know and how do we change that well first we give that compassion you know, and we have different areas in which we can look at it and just be like, okay, I see that there's this particular thing that's coming up for me. And, you know, I don't like that about myself. Okay, I don't like that I am or I can be manipulative. And my whole life I was told I was manipulative. So how can I forgive myself and move forward? And that could look like admitting it first and foremost, like if you truly do feel like that is that, if that is the case and that's not just solely projected onto you, admitting, okay, you know, I was manipulative. Why was I manipulative? Because when I was younger, I was exposed to how I wanted to get my way. So now, it doesn't necessarily have to come from a negative space. If you wanted food, right? You could see this in pets, you can see this in babies, where they want something, but they can't communicate it, or they even if they can communicate, it, they will do whatever it is that they need to do to know how they can get it. Like, oh, please, can I have this? Or like say something cute or, you know, cry until you, they get your attention. It's like all these different things are subtle forms of manipulation. And that's not necessarily rooted in bad intention. It's rooted in survival, right? So if we change our perspective in how we look at it and view it without judgment or um, being ashamed of it, then we can really accept it love it and give it space to feel safe so that we can move forward and do utilize that skill because like even in our most negative traits it has like there's a skill right that's not negative nor positive everything that kind of comes from source or from ourself like there's a skill and then whether we use it in a good way or a bad way so if you're manipulative there's ways that you can use your manipulation skill in a good way that can benefit not only you but others like you can if you have uh you want to work out right and you're 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 have a, an, a manipulative tool that you you have established early on and like, all right, well, I want to work out. How can I do this? It's like, okay, I'm going to manipulate myself in a good way or can be called encourage or motivate in certain kind of areas where, okay, well, if I go for a run, then I come home and I'll be able to watch this TV show that I love, right? And it's like these reward systems that we can give ourselves. So in a way, you can look at that as manipulation because it's like you you get something for another thing. Like if you want something, how you get it can be something productive. So when we're going into any of that, when we're going into any of the ways that we talk about and to ourselves, it is important that we find a way to be compassionate the same way when we look at other people and we can find that compassion. Like how can we find that with ourselves? I believe that if we give ourselves attention and nourishment, it's it's 
inevitable that we're going to have compassion with ourselves because we're understanding when we give ourselves when we don't give ourselves attention how could we possibly understand ourselves if we're just ignoring what we're trying to say all the time to us and and to others or what it is that we really want that's like when the negative talk like it, it, it feeds off that when you're indecisive when you're or when you're trying to make a decision right before you're about to make a decision you ever think like oh well what if i make the wrong decision i should think about this and now all of a sudden your decision making gets pushed back and now there's more factors involved and you're thinking about every possible outcome that could happen but you were kind of sure you were pretty sure and then this talks that happened there's all different depictions all over the world that symbolize what it is that we're talking about here today you know the angel on the shoulder devil on the shoulder these are all these different ways of talking about our conscious talking about our polarities within ourself and is the devil on our shoulder really like the objective to destroy us and everything about us and like and other people is it purely evil usually no like usually that's not the case like usually it's coming from a space of you know naturally in my opinion it's coming from a space of protection you know hence the ego coming from protection like it just wants to protect you it's it's survival in the now in the past if you've been hurt by xyz if you've been hurt by yourself or whatever the case is it's going to do things to constantly comfort you our ego doesn't want discomfort our ego wants the comfortability of what it already knows because then it feels safe but sometimes all the time <laughs> if you want to grow it's going to involve discomfort and that doesn't necessarily mean you're not safe it just means movement it just means change that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not safe but because you may have been unsafe in periods of transitions and changing times you may associate the two together it's very common to associate when things are changing to things not being safe and then our ego is kind of come up and is our ego is like to blame and are they like the worst no they're trying to protect us it's trying to protect it's a part of ourselves that's trying to protect us so even the worst things that we say about ourselves can be a, a that part of us trying to protect ourselves because if we didn't believe that and we were thriving and we were super confident that's going to change a lot of things and a, lo a lot of times i could speak from my own experience and for a few people that I, around me that i've like seen this happen with quite a few times is when you start thriving and when you start doing things for yourself that are good you're gonna have people that are you know in your corner and like genuinely able to be supportive usually these people are also simultaneously doing what they want to do and like building and moving and growing and then you'll have other people that may love you very much and whether they mean to or not they will kind of project their own insecurities of the fact that they're not changing and growing onto you whether it's conscious or unconscious so looking at you grow and be like oh well you're not the same oh well look at this person trying to act like this or you know or even if they don't say any of that when you tell someone you ever say it to somebody like oh you know oh look i got this you know going on and i'm gonna do this event and i'm really excited about that and then there's just kind of silence and they're just kind of like you know and that silence has nothing to do with you don't take that on you don't let that be a voice of it, like insulting yourself or doubting yourself when these moments happen. Take what's yours and leave what isn't yours. Usually that silence means that they're reflecting on all the things that they want to do and that they can't do or that they should have what you have even though they didn't put any of the work to get it or it's it's reminding them of their of their lack of change you know and that could be uncomfortable and when that's not directed in the right place and that person isn't consciously aware of what they're doing in that moment it could come off as if 
someone doesn't believe in you it could come off as if you know it's you're doing something wrong but the reality is you're just sharing what it is that you are doing and that's exciting for you and you don't have to take that on just be mindful of it and that happens you know there's a reason why people say like you know you'll see people that are um whether very financially in a, a, a successful or you know any people that are famous or just successful people or what you classify i believe successful people are all around us whether they have fame or not but when you have a conversation with a successful person they were are constantly mentioning in their stories of how they got to where they got how much you lose and how much you have to sacrifice you know sacrifice make holy less like clear the way minimize and in that there's a grieving process of course you know things are going to be different when you're growing things are going to be different even with their self like we can we grieve ourselves like to bring it back to our conscious and our the way we talk to ourselves and the different voices and the committee in our head that tells us like no we can't do this or we shouldn't do this or the fearful thoughts and and ways we need to make that space and that acknowledgement that we can really just be like okay hey i get it like i understand why you guys are doing this but like you guys could like stop talking now you could just stop like i didn't even ask you could stop like i'm gonna do what i need to do you guys can stop i get why you're nervous i get why you're trying to protect me but i'm gonna do something anyway and it's these moments is where we're breaking through that grief because we can know we can know that that isn't what we're supposed to do or that we have the self-doubt in our head but then still fall subject to it when it comes up because we're grieving the old person we were you know the person that listened to that and then would stay small because they were around small people and they didn't want to expand because then they would get attention or they would get energy directed towards them or they would change or seeming like their whole environment in which they became comfortable is now different. Illusions come pulled and you get to see who's really there rocking with you or the, the people who are there rocking with themselves, period. It doesn't matter if it's your family, your friends, your colleagues, whoever it is, strangers, you'll see that the people that are really in your corner are the people that are in their own corner. How can someone have the capacity to truly, truly, truly be there for you and support you if they're not supporting themselves? Emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, how how can they? You know, it's it's not, how can you pull something of nothing? You pull something from something. How do you pour a cup of water with an empty cup? You can't. You, you have to have water in the cup, then you could share some, right? But if something's not being established and generated within one person, within themselves, how can that be expected to be given and received? And that's something that when you're asking advice to yourself or to anyone else, really, like you ask yourself in this moment, do I want to take advice from this person? Like, even from yourself, like, say you're, like, freaking out. Do I want to take advice from me freaking out right now? Or do I want to take advice from me when I calm down? Like, when I'm chill, when I take a breath. Because me freaking out is in survival mode. So I don't know if I really need that advice right now because that's not going to consider all factors. That's in hyper-emergency mode, you know? And... Yeah, it's important. It's important the way we talk to ourselves, you know, talk nice. Talk nice to yourself. How can we reroute the negative talk? Well, we can we notice it, right? Like there's a there's a little picture that I had made for this episode. If you go on to Duality Podcast Instagram, you'll see 
right before the flyer, there's this little picture and it says, you're not enough or you're too much. And it's like the little uh, comic book thought bubbles that have like the lightning bolt thing on it. And that's in black and it's bold, right? And then on the other side, it says, sis, like you're doing just fine. And that's the speech bubble. So you have the thought bubbles, right? That are like so loud and they're bold and they're black and you can see them, right? And then the speech bubble is like this pastel purple that you can't really see, but it exists, you know? And it's coming from the mouth, like it's a speech bubble. So thought, thought bubbles and then speech bubble. Reason I made it like that is because no matter how loud the negative voices can be or our own negative voice can be in our head, when we say it's important to say something, like even out loud, like say it in your head, you know, to whatever you feel is needed or, or is right in the time. And but I highly recommend, I highly encourage you to say it out loud and not don't care about what anyone, you know, thinks or says about what it is that you're doing this for you. Like, when you start doubting yourself or start feeling, you know, insignificant or the or the negative voices, the devil on your shoulder starts talking, start calling it by its name and speaking it out loud. You know, like how in that bubble I'm talking to myself, these are the thoughts like, oh, you're not enough, you're doing too much. And I'm like, no, nah, I think you're doing just fine, sis. And the more you do that, the more amplified you can center your balanced voice where it's like, the hyper positivity is something that may work for some people. For me personally, it doesn't. Like I can't be hyper positive when I'm coming from a negative space. I could just be like, all right, how, neutral. Neutral is real for me. So when, I, when I'm like not in a good place or like these thoughts, like literally exactly what I was talking about, like these thoughts come into my head. I'd be like, no, I think you're doing okay. I think it's fine. You know, I think you're doing, and then I could build myself. Oh, I think you're doing good. I think you're doing great. I think you're doing awesome. I could get there, but I can't be like in this negative mindset and be like, you're doing so amazing. I'm like, come get, come get this, this girl. Cause she's, she's out here lying, you know, like, <laughs> and it's, um, it's about finding that balance of how you communicate with yourself. So say different things, explore that, like what it is, what is it, what does it make you feel like when you say, okay, I'm, I'm okay. Everything is love. Everything is divine timing. You know, things are going exactly the way they're supposed to. I trust. I trust the plan. Then you can call into your faith, whatever you believe in. You know, even if your faith is just believing in yourself, whether you you have a God that you trust and believe in, or if you are your own God that you trust and believe in, whatever your belief system is, consult with it in those moments. You know, please help me. Please help me to show me. You know, humble yourself. Ask for help. Even if it's from yourself, ask for help. Instead of taking bad advice. Because is the voices in your head and the conversations that are coming, are they even yours? Or are they other people's voices that have said things to you throughout your life? Are they even your voices to listen to? Or is it, are, are, is it your voice saying what other people have said to you you know when you notice you say something like your parents or like some something that someone said and sometimes it's a positive thing you're like oh wow like i understand what that means like oh, okay i'm gonna get if i get up over there and i go look for something like say someone's looking for something you're like if i get up and i go find it i'm gonna be mad and then you're like oh my goodness how many times did my parents say that to me but i get it now i get it you know it's one thing it's not necessarily the most negative thing but say, you know, that, that conversation, like, mm, you're not going to be understood. Or I don't understand what that means. Or that doesn't make any sense. What you're doing is wrong. It's actually stupid. This is really stupid. This looks ugly. Why are you doing that? Mm, you're not skinny enough for that outfit. Oh, okay. You're, you know, all these different things. You're not this enough. You're not that enough enough or or whatever your negative conversation is in your own head you know there's all different versions of what can be said is it even yours did it come from you did you create it 
probably not. So you could just kind of let that go, you know. Might not happen overnight. Certainly won't, but it happens in each moment. It happens in each moment. There's no pill, no book, no trip, no medicine that's going to make all of your issues go away in one sitting. It's not. You go on 17 transformational one-week retreats and still come back and feel empty if you're not constantly applying this stuff in moment-to-moment situations. It's all about integration. Yes, we can have these things that take us out of of our perspective, like pull us out. You know, there's different things and medicines that very much so do that. And when you shake up your perspective and or even if you're not consuming medicine, if you're, say, go on a vacation, right? You go on a trip of any sort, whether that's through medicine or through travel. You get pulled out of your everyday. It's like you get you're looking at a snow globe. You know, you have you're in the snow globe and you don't realize you're in the snow globe because this is just this is your dome. This is your area. This is where you exist in. And then you leave and then you hold it and you're like, why did I just confine myself to this one circle when there's a whole world? And the same thing applies when it comes to our thoughts. It's like, why did I just limit myself to thinking I can only do this? Or I am this way. That's just the way I am. Why are you limiting yourself to being the same when you can give yourself the space to change, to upgrade, right? We download this stuff from all of the experiences around us and from all of the things that we study and learn. And then we integrate it and we move forward. And that's why it's so important that when we go places, when we do things, when we take trips, we, and when we change our perspective that we apply it. Now, okay, I I come back from this experience where I became hyper aware of all of these different things about myself. Now, when I'm about to raise my voice because a part of me never felt heard when I was younger and I became aware of this, Am I going to just listen to the negative voice in my head when I'm getting angry and just keep raising my voice because that is what I've been used to? Or am I going to catch myself and and take responsibility for that, take a step back and take a deep breath and be like, okay, I'm not going to be that part of myself anymore. All of these different transitions and these growth periods, they come from having conversations with ourselves. Conversations with yourself could look like meditation. Meditation doesn't have to be sitting down and being, you know, an oming with your with your posture completely straight and, and your legs out. And it could be. You could absolutely take that route. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Or you can lay on the floor and you can meditate. You can walk and you can meditate. You do a handstand, you can meditate. You know, it's all about being mindful. And what does that mean? Like being conscious, being present. What does this mean? What are these words that are used all the time and thrown around? Having a conversation with yourself and giving yourself attention. That's what it boils down, at least to me. That's how I feel about it. Going back to your your breath is the most present thing that you're doing. That's why people talk about, okay, go back to your breath. Because you get out of your head and into your body, into your chest, into your heart. And and then that's easier for you to connect and bridge into your spirit. Right? Because if you're in your head, you're in your 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 mind and, and all the experiences you've received now. When you go into your heart, you drop into the vibration of love. You drop into that vibration of compassion. You can also drop into the vibration of grief. You can also drop into the vibration of heartbreak. Heart isn't just about one specific area. It's not just about love and 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 healing. It is like that is the general sense of, of it in its highest capacity. But we also harbor grief in our heart. So when we tune into that, 
now we have access to both. So we can use one to heal the other when one's out of balance. And we can do that with all of our chakras. We can do that with all parts of ourselves. If you tune into your mind and your mind is hyperactive in protecting itself and it's in its ego, it's in its experiences, we have the capacity to go into our mind and also save ourselves from exactly our mind. Like we have the capacity to do so. When we dive into that and give it space to wherever it is, what is the what is the difference between a poison and a medicine is dosage, right? So wherever you are, you want to create that balance. So when we're having conversations with ourselves, when we're having the the self talk, the or the conversations with God or our conscious or you know, our ego, the committee, whatever it is you identify with within yourself. That also should come into a balance where it's like you're being real with yourself. You're being accountable with yourself. You're being compassionate with yourself. And you're being accepting of yourself. And in that, you create the best way to communicate, which is my personal opinion. We don't want to go so far left where it's like, okay, everything is good when nothing is, or seemingly not. There's always going to be something. And then when everything is bad and we're not, or everything is good and we want to make it bad because we're afraid. We're afraid, oh no, if everything's good, what's going to happen next? Let me... Let me cause destruction before destruction is caused and harms me. That's something that, that happens. And we don't always catch that one because it's a tricky one. When we are the source of the chaos, when we are the source of the toxicity in the room, when we start the whirlwind and the tornado because we're like, oh, well, if I don't do it, I'm going to just be swallowed up by something like that. So control. So I'll control the chaos. But are you really controlling the chaos or are you contributing to the chaos? You know, are you actually controlling it? Because chaos can't really be controlled, but it could be managed. You can allow, it's like a, like a valve, right? You know, you could open up a valve, like what is gonna flow you're going to stop it, but if water continues to flow, it's going to break through one way or another. And so instead of doubting the inevitable, you can kind of just like, all right, let me moderate this. Because if you're forcing something, then you're just stopping its natural order. So how can you exist in creating boundaries within yourself in these conversations where you're upholding a certain amount of integrity and compassion for what it is, wh wh for who it is that you are, who it is you were, and who it is that you want to be. And getting clear on that in these conversations. You know, look at it as a business. You yourself is a business. You are having business meetings with all parts of you. And you're like, okay, team, how can we optimize self? How can we optimize? What, what are we ready to learn? What are we ready to let go of? You know, you can, there's so many different ways. You could do this during a full moon, a new moon. You can do it on Tuesday in between any moon events. The moon's always out here. And even if you don't resonate with the moon, which is very much so, you know, something that is a great tool to like go by. And the reason why I say that is just because the moon is, it affects our emotions. If you see what, regardless of anything that you believe in, on a, on a scientific level, the moon affects the water. We're made of 70% of water. So if the moon is affecting the tides, right? And it's like, okay, the moon is changing uh, if something is high tide, low tide. And if you see like the studies that have been done, like for example, even you know, a real life statistic or a study, my mother work, had worked in labor and delivery for so many years and she would always tell me full moons 
babies are popping out like crazy. And then you look into other things that are in, in the news or, or something that you can see around. Just notice, like, there's more crime rate during a full moon. You know, there are more people outside during a full moon than a new moon. If you become observant and you actually take your own study, you can notice these different things as well. Where you can see the new moon, people are a lot more reclusive. And the full moon, people are a lot more out. And traditionally speaking, like back in the day before we had artificial lighting and all these different things, it's said that people would go out, especially during the full moon, and we and women would ovulate during the full moon. And the reason why is our bodies would, for procreation, we can actually see a partner or a match in the moonlight at night. And there's more of a chance to reproduce. So it's like even it's our bodies the way our bodies are connected and in sync with the earth is so beautiful in its natural place and if you look around and you look at all of the technology and all of the different things that are around us that are constantly disrupting the natural flow of things not to sit there and bash all of this stuff because without technology we wouldn't be able to communicate the way we are right now so i give the reverence and the respect to it i also take acknowledgement on how all of these things should be used and dealt with in moderation and how these things can affect the way we talk to ourselves as well like we're having influence of different waves and different things that are out of sync with our natural process in our body so it's important to go to nature it's important to return to nature and we are a part of nature you know nature is a part of us that's something one of my elders always say is like we don't go to nature we return to it we return to ourselves we are a part of nature so when we're having these conversations with ourselves, when we're communicating and we're communing with what it is that we want to say we have to remind ourselves of that so i say yeah you can reflect during the moon this phase and that phase because it will amplify the natural cycle for us to sink in with ourselves and sink in with the world you know and become more clear in what it is that we want and when we get more clear with what it is that we want we can communicate more clearly with ourselves and others in the best way by unpacking and letting go of the things within ourselves when we talk to ourselves and then making space for the things that we want to say. So that's what I have for today as far as talking about that. I brought the solar plexus chakra bowl so I can play this to kind of amplify us for our confidence for anybody that may be facing and you know dealing with unpacking and or avoiding you know their own insecurities may this bowl and may this vibration of the solar plexus bowl bring a sense of confidence and acceptance in who it is that you are so you can you can make space for that true confidence so it's not fleeting so that it's not something that comes and goes but may you be able to accept and understand your insecurities and identify them as they come up and be able to have that compassion in your self-talk so that you can truly expand glow and bring forth all of the beautiful confidence that you have to carry out whatever mission it is that you are meant to do because you are needed you are needed you are seen you are needed you are felt so i'll play this bowl in this moment for all of those who'd like to receive the vibration of solar plexus, may you be amplified and carried and reminded that you are enough. You aren't too much. You're understood. You're talented. You're capable. You are able. Continue to be you and be true.
And if it feels good, taking a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Releasing the tension in your jaw, in your shoulders, in your back, in your legs, your feet, your arms, your hands. I'm putting one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. And just speaking love to yourself. Saying affirmations. Affirming to yourself how special it is that you are. And that you're worthy of the time. You're worthy of the attention. You're worthy of the healing. Of the acceptance. You're deserving. You don't have to be liked by everyone, but you should aspire to like, to love yourself. And that no matter what space you're in and where you go, that that's the most important thing to you. Is if you are okay with yourself, if you're loving yourself, if you're giving yourself that attention, not what others are doing to you or for you. Yeah. And to conclude this episode, I'm going to pull a card. For any and all of the people that are listening now, in this moment, who will listen in the future. I'm free to connect with my higher self in a good way. To connect with the energy of what is needed to be said. What is the energy, what is the frequency that we should tune in with ourselves. Show compassion and have good conversations and communication. Time. The energy of time supports our understanding of the, the relativity of time and our capacity to be present in the moment. I don't know if it's focused, but this is the card that came up. Time is such an interesting concept and that is not something we're going to go into on this episode because that is a whole other thing. But give yourself the time to grow into the person that you want to be. Give yourself that space and the ability to prove yourself right for you. You deserve to. So thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't, and yeah, hope you have a great day.